the foot in. If I'm going to grab my own foot, see I've still got a grip and this leg's heavy like I was talking about at the beginning. Grab the foot, feed it in and I put it underneath, if you just lift up Mark, I put it underneath my own leg. It's to the bottom this. I don't put it on top. It goes under. Alright. So let's go again. Put the under. Again pushing the knee away helps keep some of his weight off. Put in. You might need if if you struggle to get your foot in, escape your hip a little and then come back. Then you can grab the belt if you wish. Or, like I've done here, I've hooked underneath. Alright? Now, you do have options here, I'll go through it in a second. Because some people will grab the back of your gi and grab your collar with this hand. Because you feel that they're anchoring onto you. Okay? So that will give you a different option. We'll go over in a second. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to take this up and pull it in. And I'm trying to reach through with this hand. So I'm trying to collapse him. Look, he's flat on his elbow. I'm now going to elevate him from here and roll him over this shoulder. So I'm going diagonally across and I'm rolling him in that direction. I'm not, people go wrong with sweeps because he's trying to keep the person straight to the side. So I'm under here. I've secured this arm, even if I've just cooked him. I elevate. Oh. So this is what I was talking about earlier on. My foot in the back of his calf. He can't keep me going that way easily. My weight's still this side. Alright? As I come over, my knees feel for his elbows. Walk up. Toes in. Alright? Into this pressure. Again. I'm going to stop some of these lock people. They're going to try and shuffle back, get their elbows in. There, or there. So I put my hand in the floor. So when Mark shuffles, he's either going to go, this is too much hard work, or he'll just carry me across the floor with him. If I just do that, he's going to disappear out of the gap. So I'm going to bounce and shoot back. And you sit there like this, all of a sudden you're over the hips. So when we get this position here, fuck his head. Notice I'm leaning slightly to this side. I don't stay dead central because if he touches my elbow and bridges, I'm over. So if I'm here, I'll feel free trying to control this elbow. If he does, I'll take that out. I can switch as many times as need be. Because as he brings his arms through to grip, yeah, he starts making things vulnerable for himself. Okay? So, let's go again. It's just a slightly different approach on the basic speed. So I'm almost done. Okay? Go from there. Go from the front and foot in. So I stick my hip a little, hold it back, and maybe put the back of my leg. Right. So, one good thing about doing this, his attention is now drawn to this arm. So I'm really isolating him, making him think. So when I do that, to I go. I can even grab his collar. So I've got his sleeve and his collar. This is doing just as good up in his arm and his wrist. Because I've collapsed his weight on it. So I come up, up, bridge, 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 bridge. If you can get this position stopped, great. Again, look, I don't just do this. Ah, oh, his elbows in, that's bad for me. So as I'm here, as I first come over, I bring my knees in to feel his elbows out. Don't leave his elbows in. Again, just pop the head, pop the shoulder. Remember, if 
decouple that, they need to be in this way, or immediately take it out on the other side. You get into a little bit of a, a battle, just like when you're breaking goal, getting over the top of it, or standing, getting the grip that you want. It's all about who's going to establish the control element first. Okay, anybody want to see that again? Yeah?